Ah, uh, Bora Da. Ah, uh, and. Oh, wait, that shouldn't have been a guttural little thing at the end. Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, I don't want to be getting sick, but Bora Da. Ah, uh, yes, that was in Welsh. And the reason I went with Welsh today instead of. Ah, uh, and it meant good morning, so rather than just your average. Uh, uh, which would be, uh, uh, Gaelic, like, traditional, you know, sort of, uh, Catholic reading, and then there's the more secular, uh, literally, um, morning good, good morning, because it's, um, 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 shit. Oh crap! I forget the, uh, the the sentence structure for Gaelic, but so I picked up some Welsh when I was about twelve, thirteen, and I kind of it kind of fell into disuse for me uh, when I was about fourteen. So the reason for that is my uh, maternal grandfather grew up in a tiny village in Cornwall, uh, Triskelyard, I believe, is how it's pronounced. It's got it's like this long on Wikipedia. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, at least from where I'm standing, that's probably actual length or something. It's, it's one of those little towns that has, like, more letters in the name than it has people. And, uh, which is common enough in the Wales and Cornwall area. It's two different peninsulas, and it's like, I don't know, with Wales... You're asking yourself, does this even count as a peninsula, or is it just a, another side of the island, right? But I'm sure uh, the Welsh will be arguing about that until the sun explodes. So, Welsh, why do I know some? So I've been using Duolingo as, well, it's not my only source for learning Irish Gaelic, but... Um, there are days where it is clearly my primary source. And yes, everybody likes to, uh, ride my ass about the, uh, about how my pronunciation is a little less than perfect, depending on your regional dialect of Gaelic. And, um, I've noticed that some things it's easier for me to remember the, uh, is it the Munster dialect that's... Uh, the one in the, uh, Dublin area? I don't remember. But yeah, the, uh, that one. Um, and then other things, it's easier for me to remember the, uh, Ulster dialect, how they pronounce it. So, I don't know. Um, but yeah. And sometimes people can't even guess which dialect I'm aiming for. And, you know, I get it. It's like, I didn't grow up speaking it. I wasn't sent to school to learn it at, you know, as young as like four or five years old, and then immediately forget it, unless I live in a Gwyneth region. Uh, that's a little closer to how I think it's said, but, uh, but yeah, Welsh, I'm getting to that. Trust me, I have a point here. Jesus Christ, it's been a while since. And I know you're not supposed to dig Q-tips into your ears, but uh, it's been so long and so satisfying. As long as I don't go too deep, you know? Eh. Oh, gosh, that's gorgeous, ain't it? But, uh, but then what happens? Right, Welsh. So, I said my maternal grandfather grew up in a tiny, tiny, tiny little village in Cornwall. It's got, like, more letters in the town's name, village's name, than it has citizens of the village. So, he, uh, obviously, Cornwall is not Wales. Cornwall is a different peninsula on the island. It is, uh, I can't remember if it's the entire... Lower, um, uh, westmost peninsula, or if it's just like half of it. I know the Devonshire region is in that general vicinity, uh, but I'm sure that I understand my British Isles geography better than some, uh, native born Britons because that's just how it works. Like, don't ask your average American, like, who the 16th president of the United States was. <laughs> They're about half of them who say Lincoln. That's just a lucky guess because he's one of. Let's see, Washington is on the single, Jefferson's on the two, Lincoln's on the five, Hamilton was not a president, but he's on the ten, then Jackson is on the twenty, Grant is on the fifty, and Franklin, who's not a president, is on the hundred. So, yeah, Lincoln is one of five um, presidents who's on money, and then we've got two non-presidents on money. So people pitching a shit fit over the uh, the proposed, uh, I think it was, was it Harry Tubman or Sojourner Truth? 
Conley Tubman. People know, more people know who Tubman was. Uh, but yeah, people pitching a shit about like, hey, the non president all our money. Like, well, yeah, like, I think Martha Washington was on the first incarnation of, I think, the $5 bill. She was not a president. She was the first first lady. So, uh, but yeah, Franklin, not a president. Hamilton, not a president. But that's another story for another time. So, yeah, like, people who, like, ask them the sixth, you ask your average American who the 16th president of the United States was. Half of them who get it right and say Lincoln. That's just a lucky guess because he's on our money. And why would you specifically ask the 16th unless he was a money president? And, you know, uh, but yeah, because. All that knowledge, just like, you, you repeat it ad nauseum in, like, you know, like, first through tenth grade, and then you learn some other stuff in eleventh and twelfth grade. Then you leave school, and, you and, like, half of it goes just completely out the door. Oh, no. Um, right, Cornwall. My grandfather grew up in a tiny-ass village in Cornwall, so let's say, okay, so let's imagine this here as Wales, and I know I'm making the Michigan map, but it's like, so then you've got a wiener hanging off just underneath Wales, and that's, at least part of this peninsula is Cornwall. Those of you who do not live in the British Isles. Uh, I don't know, like, this is more like England, and then, like, imagine this is a bit more of a protrusion that's about yay high. So that's Wales, and this little wiener hanging off the end, that's Cornwall. Cornwall is Britain's wang. Whole, yeah, yeah, it is. That says nothing about my grandfather, though. That just says that there are some phallic peninsulas that rule the world. But, and yes, I know, like, Cornwall has not, like, yeah, we can discuss Arthurian legend until the sun explodes, but that's, I'm getting away from my point, and I do have one. So, my grandparents died, uh, the same year. Um, my grandfather, like I said many times before, grew up in a tiny, tiny village in Cornwall. More letters in the town's name than people, as this is, like, now the fifth time I've said that, and the joke is no longer funny, but if I do it enough, it'll come back around to being funny again. Uh, so then what happens is he had asthma. So, like, half the men in that town work for the mines, and the other half are either too young or too old to work for the mines. Uh, or so that was the case in the 1930s. I don't know, like, how many people still work the mines in Cornwall. Um, I don't know if that would be a fair assessment anymore. But we're talking the 1930s, when my grandfather was... Uh, teenager, so he was born in 1920, maybe 21, I don't know. He did not work the mines, and the reason he did not work the mines was not so much because he didn't want to, but it's because he, uh, he had asthma, and since it was one of those villages where, like, everybody is up in your business for any or no reason. So, he had asthma, so, like, everybody in town was just, like, knew him, knew what, knew his business, and knew that... It was not good for him to work the mines, being asthmatic. So, he wasn't so keen on working the farms either, because there is agriculture out there as well. It's not just people working the mines. Obviously, the, you know, half work the mines, half either too young or too old, that's a bit of an exaggeration. It's for storytelling. What happens is, uh, he was not the biggest fan of working around large livestock and... With his asthma, it wasn't good for him to work around, like, the poultry livestock either, you know, with the feathers and bird dew and shit. So, he decided, okay, I'm gonna go where nobody knows me. It'll take a long-ass time for the, uh, the whispering to get around to, ah, to get around to family. So, he decided he was gonna move to London, uh, when he was, like, 16 years old, which was, like, completely legal adult, in fact, like, especially at the time. Then what happens is, you know, he met my grandmother, obviously, like, he worked the, uh, he worked the freight docks on the Thames, and my grandmother was, um, I don't know, like, 17 and a half, maybe just turned 18. I'm not sure exactly how far past his 16th birthday he was when he basically hitchhiked from Triskelyard, Cornwall, to London. But, um, but yeah, uh, she wrapped bars at the Cadbury factory, and the girls who work, who worked the Cadbury factory, and the young boy, and the young guys who worked the docks, so, like, the girls at the Cadbury factory, the boys at the docks, they would all meet up at, like, this one pub. It was basically like a little singles mixer after work <laughs> between the boys from the docks and the girls from the chocolate factory, and, uh, if you asked my grandfather, uh, 
she was being a little bit drunk and obnoxious, but in this cute way that reminded him of, like, one of his aunts or one of the other old ladies in his village who practiced witchcraft and smoked a pipe. But if you ask my grandmother, she was a perfect lady the whole time. She has no idea what crap my grandfather was talking. Don't listen to him. He lies. But... One of the things he did not lie about was growing up in Cornwall. <laughs> in a tiny-ass village in Cornwall. In fact, but, uh, but yeah, one of the things that is a lie about growing up in Cornwall in the 1920s and 30s is there was a fairly common belief amongst linguists that it was a dead language until attempts to revive it. I think they officially launched a revival of the Cornish language in like the 70s, maybe the 60s. I don't know. There have been attempts to revive it, but um, it's, uh, it, it's been a bit of a task to revive it. Uh, now, the reason that uh, it is that some linguists classified it as a dead language uh, it varies between them, between which linguists you're talking to, but that's not exactly true because my grandfather, like many people from these little tiny-ass villages with more letters in the name than there are people in the village, he grew up speaking natively kind of a pigeon of English with seemingly random Cornish vocabulary. Now, he didn't have you know, a significant language barrier between himself and my grandmother. Um, like there wasn't really a language barrier. Um, obviously, people who spoke just English would come through the village just enough because, you know, mines um, and capitalism and shit, right? So, and with capitalism, colonialism, and so, yeah. So, like, he understood plenty English. He spoke English, more easily decipherable enunciation than my grandmother, who grew up in, uh, in deep East End. She, she's like, she was like the fourth or fifth woman from her mother's side of the family, like fourth generation of her description, Cockney factory women. So, so he natively spoke a pigeon of Cornish and English. So it wasn't a completely dead language. I mean, they had to revive it from somewhere. But oh, he and my grandmother died less than a year apart. Like, his doctor says he probably just from stress because he died from a bleeding stomach ulcer that yeah, at, at, at some point, I don't know. It was probably a combination of things, but his doctor said that, you know, he stressed himself after she died. And I believe that because in retrospect, my grandfather almost certainly had anxiety attacks, and I recognize this now, in retrospect, because I have anxiety attacks, and I am pretty sure during his anxiety attacks, his vocabulary would get more and more Cornish. They died maybe ten and a half months apart, and... I remember because it was summer when my grandmother died, and we were like maybe a month short of the school year ending when my grandfather died, so... And I was 10. I was 10 when that happened. So then what happens is I'm 12 years old, and I decide... Because uh, I was really close to those grandparents, not close enough to remember all of the crazy moon language he was speaking when he'd be under high stress. Just because, if only because at that point he'd been living in the States so long, he never really had a need to speak any Cornish vocabulary. So it just, some of it just kind of slipped out from lack of use, as happens when you don't use a language very much, which thus is why, uh, outside the Gwaeltach in uh, Ireland, even though there is mandatory um, education in the Irish language, uh, amongst pretty much all of my friends who live there, which isn't that many, but enough to that they definitely know what they're talking about. Uh, so yeah, like outside the Gwilta, uh regions of Ireland, where that is 
generally the first language of people, even though people are uh, bilingual, like uh, the last well, like a monoglot speaker died, I want to say 1980. Um, but then what happens? Uh, so yeah. So, in spite of attempts to revive it, barely anybody outside the Gwiltach um, regions of Ireland, which is just Irish first language. Like, you can go there and speak English and get along just fine. Um, you can speak some broken Irish, <laughs> like I do, and I'm sure people will be entertained. Or then, you know, if you're somebody, you know, like, who lives in a major city far outside of the Gwiltach uh, neighborhood, and you're on the internet, and you hear me saying, uh, or listening to the fact that I pronounce my name Rowan, and you think you're gonna gaslight me by telling me I pronounce it like Roan, like a seal. I'm like, no, I don't. First off, I audibly say two syllables. I just, I understand. I have an unusual affected accent. It is a mid-Atlantic or transatlantic accent. So, the reason I speak a little bit of Welsh, and... I am utilizing Duolingo to basically brush up on it. I haven't used it in, oh god, about 25 years. The reason I picked up Welsh, so, like I said, grandfather died when I was 10. When I was about 12, um, I felt really bad. Like, this is, this is what Catholic guilt does to you. I felt really bad that I did not know any of my grandfather's language. Like I said, like, natively he spoke a pigeon of English with seemingly random Cornish vocabulary. Uh, so yeah, Catholic guilt sets in when I'm about 12, so I decide that I felt really bad. Like, these were the grandparents I was closest to, because they were the only ones alive when I was growing up. But that's another story for another time. I take that back. My father's mother, um, she died when I was three. Yeah, I was three when she died. Ah. Uh, in fact, my only memory of her is I'm playing with her cancer wigs, and my father and my Aunt Judy are having some kind of argument in the front room, and Grandma Ruby is right there. Yes, my dad named my, um, only living half-sister, who's his eldest child, after her. Uh, first name was from his mother. Her middle name is Ellen. His name is Ray Allen. He says this was not naming her after himself. His second wife says otherwise, but I digress. So, I was feeling really bad. Like, I, like, for some reason, like, I'm 12 years old, and somehow I get it in my head that I am the worst grandchild in the whole world because I did not know any of my father, my grandfather's crazy, like, anxiety attack moon language that he would slip into more and more. Like, you know, like, just more of his native Cornish vocabulary would just come out as he's trying to explain things through the stammer, which I have also have a, uh, anxious stammer. So, yes grandfather. I was, I had convinced myself I was the worst grandchild in the history of grandchildren everywhere. My closest grandparents, my only grandparents that I knew, like, and my grandfather specifically grew up speaking a language that was not English, or at least not completely English, <laughs> so, and I knew none of it. My mother and her sisters didn't really speak it, but they understood what he meant when he would say certain words that were clearly of Cornish origin. Uh, so, yeah. Um, then what happens? So I'm 12 years old, and I feel awful about this. I am the worst grandchild in the history of all grandchildren everywhere, especially Catholic grandchildren, because that's just how it works. So I get it in my head that, okay, to make my grandfather's spirit happy whilst... I'm the worst ex-Catholic, too. <laughs> I am the worst at everything. But that's another story for another time. So, I, uh, I get it in my head that to atone for my sin of not knowing any Cornish, I am going to learn some. And I'm 12 years old. And I'm going to junior high in Lenaway County, Michigan, which is a shit county for teenagers, especially in the early to mid-1990s. Terrible, terrible place for teenagers, um, especially 25-some years ago. So, 
I go to the library, and they do have computers, and they do have computers that will tell you, like, where books are in other branches of the library, but that is, like, the closest thing to an interlibrary loan that we had, and even then, at the time, it was, like, something like 25 cents a book from outside your branch, and because I lived, like, just between the cities of Tecumseh and Adrian, I had to go to the county library, which was different from the Tecumseh Public Library or the Adrian Public Library. And the Adrian one had, like, three branches, like, strategically placed in the city. The Tecumseh Library, at least in 1992, 93, had the one branch, like, almost in the middle of town. But um, and yeah, I had to pay something like, ugh, we're talking 1990s money, we're talking like 1992 money, uh, I think it was something like $20 a year for a Tecumseh City Library card, and, um, and that was a lot of money in 1992. So, Lenaway County Library, I'm there, and the closest thing. Like, was it? Yeah, it was the county library. It was the county library, because the county library had access to, um, I think we were able to do, uh, interlibrary loan from the county library, um, into Hillsdale and Washtenaw counties as well. Um, I don't remember if they were connected to other branches in Michigan. Like, like there's the Melcat, I believe, is the interlibrary loan system for Michigan libraries now, but we're talking 1992. It was very difficult to do interlibrary loan at the time. And plus, like, because my county library sucked, it was something like a quarter for every book, which we're talking 1992 quarters. Like, a quarter was literally, like, a phone call from a payphone. And it was something like, like, you maxed out at like 20 minutes or something. So, but I digress. Yet again. Oh. Worst grandchild in the world. I decide, okay, to atone for this, I will teach myself Cornish. I go to the county library. I am psyched. I'm going to look up. Okay, does uh, Hillsdale County, any of those libraries have books on teaching, on, on uh, learning how to speak Cornish? No. Washtenaw County, no. I don't remember if I had access to other counties. All I do know is that I was not able, in a minimum of three Michigan counties in 1992, able to get any kind of resource, like no, um, 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 book, audio cassette, combo kit that you check out, and it's like two tapes, and there's the person who doesn't even have, uh, a native accent for the language and like 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 uh like Jackie Kennedy speaking Spanish with a heavy French accent like hilarious shit this is what we dealt with in 1992 kids so then what happens is like like there were none of these on the audio tape there were none with a book and a record album like the vinyl 12 inch LP and like four of them to get a decent lesson out of one of those audio kits I did not have a CD player, but I do remember that they didn't even have any of the CD and book combos. They did not even have just a book anywhere that I was able to access and get a book to the Lenaway County Library. This was not an option for me. So, I did some research using the good old World Book Encyclopedia. And not encyclopedias, it is already a plural. Encyclopedia would be the plural of many encyclopedia, but that's another story for another time. That's just me being a pedantic jackass, right? So, then what happens is, I go to the World Book, right there at the library, which is in the reference section, which you can't check out of the library, but then again, I am literally the only child in all of the 1980s who ever read the encyclopedia for fun. Why? It's full of facts! And I love facts, especially when I was a little kid, and my brain was primed to absorb them all, and yet I've gained no powers from this. But, so I go to the world book, and I look up, 
Um, I look up Cornwall, and from there I like notice like Cornish languages, and it says something like uh, see see Celtic languages. So I went to Celtic languages like earlier in the C volume. Were there two C volumes, or was there one? Who cares? Ah, uh, so I went earlier in C under C E for Celtic, and. It said something like, uh, something about, um, there being, like, the two main language groups amongst the Celtic languages. There's the Gaelic, or Godelic. I don't know. I just say Gaelic. I just say Gaelic. You got Manx, uh, Scottish, and Irish in that group. And then there's the Brythonic, or, um, Britannic. Uh, Brythonic is, I don't know, I see that a lot more than I see Britannic. Uh, so yeah, then you see the Brythonic languages, which would be Welsh, Cornish, uh, possibly Pictish, depending on who you ask, um, and Breton. Pictish is effectively dead. Um, Breton has had a fairly successful revival um, in the um, Brittany region of France. Uh, it, they speak Breton there. like, And uh, Welsh has survived, like, intact, and very much adapted itself um, to new words and new technology and everything. So Cornish has had its ups and downs. Um, uh, Breton, um, the, the French really tried to kill Breton for, you know, uh, for, for centuries. And then uh, my friend Allie, who's uh, living there now, um, she, um, on a student visa, like you're supposed to when you move to a new country, right? Ah! They really tried to kill, um, the, the Breton, uh, language. Uh, it has since had a very healthy revival, from what I hear from Ali, and the government has had a not insignificant hand in reviving this, realizing, oh, shit, we were colonial jackasses. I guess we gotta, well, okay, let's... Let's work this. Let's, because, like, diversity, right? Yes. All right. So, I learned through the World Book Encyclopedia, or was it Global World Encyclopedia? I don't know. It was one of those World Encyclopedia um, at the library in Lenaway County. So, I learned from there that, okay, Welsh is close enough. <laughs> like, it is close enough. It's... Uh, you figure Breton would be a little bit more removed. Not only is there the channel um, between the two, it's probably picked up a little bit more from the local French dialects on um, influencing how it works. But, so, Welsh, it's close enough. At the very least, if I ever find a way to learn proper Cornish language, I will have a leg up over somebody starting to learn Cornish from scratch. You know, it's like if you grow up speaking Spanish, whether like as your primary language or as, you know, bilingual English Spanish, um, and then you go to Italy or Portugal, not so much France, but Italy or Portugal, like you can grow up in Spain or even Mexico speaking Spanish and go visit people in Portugal or Italy, and you can kind of noodle your way around just to like, okay. I mean, it's not going to be great. You're not going to be holding any deep philosophical conversations about life, the universe, and everything if you only speak Spanish. But it is close enough related to Portuguese and Italian that it is much easier for you to learn Italian or Portuguese if you're starting from a base of Spanish, whether, you know, Spanish monoglot or Spanish bilingual with something else natively, I don't know, but, so yeah, and it's one of those situations with, like, Welsh, Cornish, Breton, and, like I said, if Pictish were still alive, um, as a language, of course, and there are still people, um, with Pictish ancestry, one of my exes is one of them, this would be Scott, who I refer to as my best ex, and, I, I don't know, like, my dad's side being from, uh, Belfast. <laughs> I brain farted. I, I said, I almost said Ulster, which Belfast is in, but that's a little broad. Uh, but yeah, my dad's family's from Belfast, so, like, uh, the, the reason, like, with the whole, like, Irish versus Scottish, it's a deal where, like, um, the Scots were tribes that basically the Irish voted off the island to go up to all of those rocks and mountains and sheep, and those crazy blue people that Hadrian is, like, building a wall <laughs> to keep them away from the Roman settlements. And we're just like, alright, you go with your crazy blue people off our island, go. 
Bye. So, uh, so yeah, like, I would always, like, Scott and I would just, like, do that little, like, couples, like, fake good-natured bickering, uh, back and forth, like, <laughs> and he says, well, come on, you're, you're, you're people, you're, uh, uh, sh is she, is she four? Is she four? Is that whiskey? I don't know. But I now hear how that became whiskey, because the Irish term for whiskey, and there's a bite-sized Irish lesson on YouTube about it. Is she four? No, no, that's cold water. It's just something. I don't know. But it means water of life. <laughs> like, this is literally the Irish term for whiskey. And he says, well, come on, you, you, you call, people call it, like, the strongest alcohol you guys make is the water of life. Like, no wonder your family's so fucked up on that side. And I said, yeah, but you people were having a great time with, uh, <laughs> with those rocks and sheep and crazy blue people. <laughs> yeah, because the Woden, and the Picts and Hadrian with the wall. It's like, and I was talking to somebody else this week, and it, it occurred to me that, like, Trump is, like, the Emperor Hadrian in that sense. It's like, you know, the, Rome, well, I mean, not exactly, but it's like, so like Rome had, the, a lot of Roman soldiers especially had this belief that the further from Rome you got, the crazier the natives were. And this was confirmed. <laughs> not necessarily the less civilized in the Roman way, but it's like, y you people are nuts. <laughs> I mean, uh, which, you know, yeah, we can just like say, okay, like this is like clearly just like some pejoratives about cultural differences and all of that. But uh, it, it's funny to think that like they got, so Hadrian's Wall came up because Roman um, soldiers were, like, trying to get through into, like, more of Scotland and be like, oh, come on, you gotta have some kind of resources here that we can colonize and, like, yeah, we'll put up a, a temple to Jupiter, but you can, like, you can worship your own god here, just, like, you know, like, give him Jupiter's epithets and all of that. And then the picks were, you know, like, making themselves blue, like, ah! And, like, these crazy naked blue guys, like, ah! And the Romans are just like, ah, 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 Adrian, um, crazy naked blue guys, like, with the sheep, no, put that sheep away! <laughs> <laughs> Which I understand is like a, a Welsh in joke as well. Just let, let me have this. Let me have this. We're talking about one of my exes. Yes, he's my best ex. We're friends somehow. But <laughs> it's like this is like what we would be talking. Like we would go like back and forth at each other. It would be like like a like, oh god. It was like um like ah brain fart brain fart like like Burns and Allen or um or Mayall and Edmondson like those like, or like shit Jim Henson and Frank Oz like, like some of these like comedy duos where they, they can just like go back and forth for hours if you just let them <laughs> or shit Lucy and uh, Lucy and Desi they were like that. In fact, like oh gosh. I think Desi remarried after they divorced, but, like, they still consider each other the love of their, you know, the loves of their life, and, uh, but yeah, they just, they reached a point where they couldn't live together anymore, but, uh, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked, so yeah, that is, a uh, plus, like, a little, like, junk shop history lesson on why there are ruins of Hadrian's Wall up in Scotland, it's because, like, a Roman emperor got up there and he's like, there are crazy blue people all over this place, I, I, I don't even think there's resources, like, they're, they're, they're crazy, and they're blue, and there's rocks, and there's sheep, like, I don't know, let's just, like, build up a wall, and this way, they can stay on that side of the wall, and the civilized society can stay on this side of the wall, and we'll have some guards posted at the wall to keep them out, and I don't know, it's two different approaches to their, um, you know, crazy colonial racism sort of stuff, like, it's two different approaches, but still, it's like, Hadrian built a wall, Trump wants a wall, and even though, like, it has been explained to him very carefully, the, the wall's not gonna keep anybody out, it's just, it's just there to look nice, like Hadrian's Wall at this point. Like, if we were still, like, trying to keep, like, naked blue guys out of our settlements, a wall could be effective. But, no, no, this is long past Hadrian. But, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's why I know Welsh. <laughs> so that's how I know Welsh, is because it was a... It was, um, it was a concession prize to learning Cornish. And I do generally speak it a lot better than I speak Irish. And, um, so there's a, uh, there's a Discord server I'm on for, you know, from people who natively speak to people who are at least attempting to learn Celtic languages. And I can't remember where I found this Discord server, but hopefully I can put a link in the description box below. And I'm on there, and I pointed this out to somebody that, like, it's been 25 years since I've used my Welsh, but this little refresher course that I'm using on Duolingo, and I'm not only using Duolingo for Irish, but I, it has been at least two and a half years I've been attempting to learn Irish using, um, this is, like I said, some days Duolingo is my primary source for learning Irish, but I use other things as well. This is, like, this. everybody who's learning, diff you know, additional languages will tell you. You don't want to stick to just one source. You want to have at least two, ideally a minimum of three. Okay, fair. So, it's not my only source, but many days it is my primary source. And I am suffering. Like, I have found myself in tears just trying to remember sentence structure in Irish. <laughs> like... Like, not not even when people are, like, yelling at me because I don't have perfect pronunciation of certain words. If I were to describe Welsh sentence structure compared to Irish, it's probably 
a little bit closer to English sentence structure than Irish is, so it's like sort of like the way that sentence structure in Welsh works is sort of somewhere on a continuum between um, Godelic, Celtic languages, and English, which is a Germanic language technically, but I digress. So, um, so yeah, like other people were saying that, um, yeah, oh, somebody was looking up some kind of source, like in one of their sources, and it says that, you know, yeah, um, in fact, I, oh, right, Allie. So, Allie was saying that she's got, um, a couple of friends in France, uh, one is learning Breton, and uh, a friend of hers in England who's learning Welsh, and she says that her friend's learning, um, the friend in England who's learning Welsh, and the friend in France who's learning Breton are suffering significantly less <laughs> than, um, her friends in both England and France, I believe, who are trying to learn Gaelic. I think one is also in the, in the U.S., like, besides myself. So, um, but yeah, she says, like, oh, yeah, my friends learning uh, Britannic languages are suffering so much less, and one of them says it's downright easy. And so I went on to the Discord for the Celtic languages, and I said, okay, has anybody else had this experience? Because here's mine, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily because I picked up some at the ages of 12 and 13, because it's been 25 years since I've used any. Like, yeah, I don't just from disuse, just from nobody to speak it with, I just kind of, it just fell into disuse by the time I was 14. So, um, but like, here's some accounts from, um, folks, friends of, friends of a friend, um, um, who are also, like, suffering so much less with Britonic languages than they are with Gaelic. Uh, is this a thing? Like, is this a thing, or is this just, like, five crazy people <laughs> who just, I don't know, like, have a much easier time with Welsh and or Breton than with Irish. And apparently this is a thing. This is a thing that, like, Welsh is just an easier language to learn from a starting point of English, especially English only, than, or uh, even if it's just English only, than Gaelic is. And I'm not giving up on learning to speak Irish Gaelic. Uh, it's just, like, Having this refresher course on Welsh, I feel so much better about myself since, like, reintroducing that language into my life, and, I don't know, now I feel like the worst son in the world, because at least my dad and his dad used a few Irish swear words on occasion. I don't even say pulled the hon. Uh, when somebody, like, I don't know, like, slams into me at the nightclub. I don't even do that. I don't even do that. I don't even know if I said that right. So yeah, like, now, like, I picked up Welsh because I was the worst grandchild in the history of all grandchildren everywhere, and now that I have a... N now that I'm, like, realizing that I, I, I don't suffer when I'm speaking Welsh, at least not in the same way that I do when I'm speaking Gaelic. Like, sometimes it's, some things get hard. Some things get difficult, especially when we're coming into these things that, like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm learning words that I didn't know were, you know, things Welsh had words for, because it wasn't really part of my little kits that I would check out from the library. So, yeah, first I was the worst grandchild in the world uh, for you know, not knowing any Cornish, and then for learning Welsh as a concession prize to Cornish. Uh, so yeah, if I ever find myself in Cornwall for some reason, and reading bilingual, um, or even monoglot Cornish signage on places, it'll be easier for me to learn, seeing as I already know some Welsh. Uh, on the other hand, I'm suffering through Irish Gaelic, and... I, I have literally been in tears just trying to remember proper sentence structure and, in Irish, and it is so difficult because it is so bonkers when compared to English grammatical structure. So, yeah, and now I'm combing my hair as a nervous thing. I have so many nervous habits, and I feel bad about myself for them. But that's what happens when you grow up in a Catholic household. So, 
I have been rambling on for far too long. I have definitely missed the last possible bus to go out to the nightclub. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I'd already missed it by the time I was done with my face, and I wasn't even talking all that much at that time. And it was one of those things where I just barely, like, I could have left right that minute, and it's like, I don't know, like, even if I'm not talking at the camera, like, I wasn't even dressed. I wasn't even dressed. Getting dressed would not have, like, I don't know, that would have taken a, uh, I don't know, I don't know. All right, so, bats and kisses, wear your sunblock, um, hit the like if you enjoyed watching a crazy Midwesterner with a mid-Atlantic accent who speaks a little bit of Welsh okay and really suffers trying to remember anything in Gaelic besides his first name. <laughs> uh, uh, I remember Coit for cat. <laughs> because I have three. Coit uh, dove, black cat. I remember it's noun and adjective, like some languages. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, if you enjoyed watching a crazy person, um, ramble at the camera for however long I edit this down to. Hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, you can hit the thumbs down. Interaction is interaction. Uh, subscribe and bell notifications if you haven't already and you find my getting, I don't know, my, my bathroom nonsense at least vaguely entertaining. That would be nice. There are apparently at least a thousand weirdos entertained by this. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I I don't know. Sometimes people say, a lot of times people say, oh, make the kind of videos you would enjoy watching. And I don't know. I might enjoy watching my own videos if it wasn't me. Like if it was somebody else, I might enjoy it. Just just to see whatever this weirdo is going to say next. But yeah, um, bell, subscribe. Um, if you have more dollars than cents, I have a PayPal tip jar in the description box. I also, have, I also have a Patreon. I have a new single coming out on a compilation from Mystic Fragments Records. I will probably do a pitch reel about that very soon-ish. I don't know. Maybe. I'll talk to, I'll talk to my, uh, my friend at the label about that. Uh, but yes, I have a single that's going to be on a compilation. Um, at the current time, it will be exclusive to Mystic Fragments for at least until the end of the year, um, I will probably just like put a non-buyable thing on my Bandcamp with a link to the comp. Um, I've also got this scheduled to um, be released on an album I've been kind of slowly working on. And uh, so yes, I have music coming out on a real live label. It's going to be released on CD. Woo! I've got music coming out, and all of that, and that is my shilling, because it's my own goddamn shit, and a label that's working with me, so, um, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, I'm done, <laughs> I'm done, I've talked way too much, so yes, thumbs, subscribe, bell, um, dollars, I don't know, uh, my food stamps are still kind of borked up, so, uh, Amazon wish list. Send me a case of almond milk or I don't know, like like bread dough dry goods kits. I just like add an egg and water or something, and it's bread somehow. After the dough rises, and I put it in the oven at the magical temperature for the magical right amount of time and all of that. So yes, and um, bats and kisses once again, and all of this happy horse shit, and Phoebe. Do we want to say goodbye to you people? No. Okay. All right. Take care and goodbye. Oh, Phoebe does want to say hi. No, Phoebe wants to go under the counter because Murnau is being a dick. He's been being a dick to her all day, but he's cute. All right. Bye-bye.